Uh, let's take a look here at some examples. Uh, for the first part, let's evaluate the following line integrals. So for our first item, we evaluate the line integral of 2x plus 9z over z with respect to the arc length parameter s, where c here is, is parameterized by the vector function r of t, with first, second, and third components t, t squared, and t cubed, where t runs from 0 until 1. Uh, so here, again, recall now that our goal is to replace here x, y, and z by x of t, y of t, and z of t, and then ds is replaced by r prime of t, the norm of r prime of t multiplied now by dt. So for our solution, uh, again, we need here r prime. So given r of t there, r prime of t, notice, is equal to the vector with components 1, 2t, and 3t squared for the derivatives of t, t squared, and t cubed respectively. So in which case, the norm of r prime of t is now equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So you have here 1 plus the quantity 2t squared plus the quantity 3t squared quantity squared. And so to simplify, this is equal now to the square root of 1 plus 4t squared plus 90 to the fourth. Uh, this, however, is not a perfect square, so we could no longer simplify. So in which case, the line integral over c of 2x plus 9z with respect to the arc length parameter s is equal now to the integral. Again, for the parameter domain, this goes from 0 until 1, so we have here 0 to 1. Uh, 2x plus 9z, again, x is replaced here by, by t, the x component of r of t, plus we have here 9 times z is replaced by the z component of r of t, so this is t cubed, multiplied now by ds, which is replaced by the norm of r prime of t, so that would be 1 plus 4t squared plus 9t to the fourth dt. So it remains for us to actually solve for this definite integral or to actually find its antiderivative. Uh, so notice for this case that this can be solved using simple substitution. So that is, if we let u equal now to 9t to the fourth plus 4t squared plus 1, then this tells us that du is equal now to the following. We have here 4 times 9t cubed plus 2t dt. Since again, the derivative of 9t to the fourth plus 4t squared plus 1 is 36t cubed plus 8t plus 0 multiplied now by, by dt. So in which case, this integral is equal now to the definite integral of the following. So here, 9t cubed plus 2t is actually replaced by du divided by 4. So I have here 1 fourth. And then the square root of 1 plus 4t squared plus 9t to the fourth is replaced now by u raised to 1 half. Uh, so since this is in terms of u now, we'll replace the values for t, which are 0 and 1 in terms of u. So notice that uh, when t is equal to 0, u here is equal now to 1, while if t is equal to 1, then u is equal to 9 plus 4 plus 1. So that would be 13 plus 1, or that would be 14. And so to compute now for the antiderivative, uh, this is equal now to, uh, again, 1 fourth. The antiderivative of u to the 1 half would be u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, or that would be times 2 thirds. And then this is evaluated now from u equals 1 going to u equals uh, 14. And so this is equal now to uh, 1 fourth times 2 thirds is 2 over 12, or that would be 1 over 6. And then evaluating u to the 3 halves from 1 until 14 would give us 14 raised to 3 halves minus 1 raised to 3 halves, or so this is equal now to 1 6 multiplied by 14 square root of 14. 1 raised to 3 halves is equal to 1, and then so this is minus 1. And so this is now our answer for the first example.
If you have any question, you may pause the video or you may leave a comment below. But for now, we will proceed with our second example. Uh, here instead, let's evaluate the line integral of 2 plus x squared y along c with respect to the arc length parameter s where c is the upper half of the unit circle. Uh, so the question is, what is the difference of this example from the previous one? Uh, so notice, we already have a function to integrate given by 2 plus x squared y. We're also given now by the smooth curve c, which is the upper half of the unit circle. Uh, however, uh, we need a parameterization for c. So take note, you could construct any parameterization you like uh, since... Uh, the line integrals do not depend on the parameter pa parameterization. Uh, however, uh, you could choose certain parameterizations depending on the convenience of integration. So, uh, for example, you may consider uh, the parameterization for C given by R of T equal now to the following. So, since you have a circle, uh, we, we could Take a look at the polar coordinates as a parameterization. So that is, we could use here r cosine t and r sine t for x and y respectively, where r is the radius of uh, the given circle. So here, the circle now has radius 1. So r here is 1. And so we replace x by cosine of t. And then y is re replaced now by r sine of t, where r is 1. So that would be sine of t. And so, uh, what values of t do we need to actually trace the upper half of the circle? So using polar coordinates, uh, the upper half of the circle, given this parameterization, would need t from 0 until, until pi. So as an alternative, you could also take a look here at c, given now by the Cartesian equation, y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared, since we're taking a look at the upper half of the unit circle. Um, given this curve, we could also have the parameterization r of t equal now to the vector function with x component given by t, since this is uh, the independent variable, and y, which is the dependent variable, can be replaced now by 1 minus t squared. So for us to trace now uh, the upper half of the unit circle, uh, we need here t from negative 1 to 1 since, uh, if you take a look here, uh, if this is x equals minus 1, x equals 1, and then y equals 1, then we'll have here this upper half of the circle. And so using our parameterization using polar, this would go from this point going to this point when t runs from 0 until pi. Well, if we use this parameterization instead, t n squared of 1 minus t squared from negative 1 to 1, this would go from this point going to this point instead. So we'll use here the polar coordinates instead. So now, again going back, we'll need now r prime of t and its norm. So given r of t, r prime of t now would be equal to the vector uh, the, with following components. The derivative of cosine t is minus sine t, while the derivative of sine t is cosine of t. And so, for the norm of r prime, this is equal now to the square root of uh, negative sine t quantity squared is sine squared t, plus cosine t quantity squared is cosine squared t, in which case, what's inside the square root is equal to 1. So the square root of 1 is equal now to 1. And so, to compute the integral over c of 2 plus x squared y with respect to the arc length parameter s is equal now to the integral from um, the parameter domain is from 0 until pi. And so we have now 2 plus x squared, x is cosine, so we have here cosine squared t. Uh, y is sine of t, so you have here cosine squared t times sine of t. And ds is replaced now by the norm of r prime, which is 1, multiplied now by dt. So to integrate, this is equal now to uh, the integral 
of 2 plus cosine squared t sine of t evaluated from 0 until pi. Uh, the antiderivative for 2 is 2t. Two plus, uh, for the antiderivative of cosine squared t sine t, uh, take note here that we could let u equals cosine t. And du here would be equal now to minus sine t dt. So as a shortcut, uh, take note here that this becomes u squared, this becomes negative du. So we're integrating negative u squared with respect to u. And so we'll get there negative u cubed over 3. Or that is, what we have now would be the negative of cosine cubed t over 3. And this expression is evaluated now from t equals 0 going out to t equals pi. And so, using the second fundamental theorem of calculus at t equals pi, what we have would be 2 pi minus cosine pi is negative 1, its cube is negative 1, so the negative of negative 1 is positive 1 over 3, minus at t equals 0, you have here 0, Minus cosine 0 is 1, it's cubed is 1 over 3. So you have here 0 minus 1 third. And so to simplify, you have here 2 pi plus 1 third minus negative 1 third, or that would be plus another 1 third. And so this is 2 pi plus 2 thirds. So in which case we have here the following answer. So again, if you have any question, feel free to go back and uh, rewind this video. Uh, if things are still not clear, you can leave a comment below. We'll proceed with example number three on the next video.